Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to, using K-Means and PCA, we're going to cluster DNA data, well, from the company I took a DNA test with. However, you guys can apply this project to your own DNA, regardless of the company you took the DNA test with. I'll show you guys how. And it, see my last video for explaining uh, different columns, because my last video where we PCA clustered, there was only three columns, and there was only one allele, not two alleles. However, this has more columns. Now, you guys can do this, whether it's Ancestor DNA, uh, 23andMe, Genome Link. It doesn't matter. However, there's some of these companies where you can take the test directly, and you can upload results from another company. It doesn't matter. Remember, all these companies are automated by algorithms, so we're just getting into the very basics. Very basics. And um, you guys, here's the thing. Um, read the text format. Separate with T. Air bad lines equals false. This is so you space it out. And if you guys have any um, things at the top, delete it. And then just make sure, delete everything down at the head of the thing. And then till you're down to this so you can make a data frame. Because, you know, there's a bunch of uh, things on there, like non-disclosures, blah, blah, blah. Delete it. It'll mess up your data frame. Anyways, guys, there's the new data frame. As you can see, we're going to need to encode it. And also, there's the info. And drop in A's. And then here's the thing. We're going to label encode everything, but as type string. Fit transform the data frame as type string. Object, okay, DF head, as you can see, it's encoded. Remember, guys, the last video I took, there was one allele, and uh, RSID was uh, the reference number to the SNP. Last time, it was just SNP, so this is more broken down into the position and the chromosome, the number of the chromosomes. Everyone has 23. Unless you have, uh, let's not get into sensitive subjects, then you would have more than 23. We're not here to get into that. Anyways, guys, um, standard scalar fit transform DF one hot equals DF. So therefore, you're going to fit um, NCHS with the standard scalar, of course, also. And then PCA, you're going to fit NSHS. Okay, and then the experience, explained variance ratio. We see the bend right here. I'm going to put a 3. MP comes some. Yeah. Anyways, and then pass the parameter right here. Fit NSHS transform. Okay. And there's the, the, as you can see, it's performing principal component analysis on this data frame. In this range, we're going to find the, the, the best K and K. Fit XPCA. Okay. Get the values. And here we go. Now, here's where if you have the same case as mine, there's two and there's four. Traditionally, in machine learning, we're supposed to go with two since that's the first elbow. However, this one is a bigger elbow, and I wanted to give the algorithm a little more leeway, you know? I never like going with less than three clusters. However, this is not too serious of a project, so I'm going to give it a little leeway. Traditionally, machine learning, you're supposed to go with two right here. Debatable, four. Of course, none of these, none of these. Okay. So I pass four right here. Doesn't mean you have to do what I'm doing if you have the same thing. Okay, PC. And guys, see my other video for um, mall clustering, my other video uh, with CSV data. See my other video, the last one, the previous one, where we compare Korean to Estonian DNA. And uh, I found a funny coincidence with the Estonian DNA and my DNA. Uh, I'll get into that later. And then, um, just so you guys know, um, uh, see my other videos. This is more my basic stuff. 
In fact, guys, I've got one for web scraping and using PCA to find the similarities in words. See my other video that for that, for doing dealing with text data. Also see my clustering video for uh, image processing where we extract the colors. I got a lot of videos on my channel. Most of it is ML Ops and Advanced with microservices, SageMaker, SageMaker pipelines, various SageMaker models. I got reinforcement learning. I got all kinds of stuff. So check out my channel. If you're here right now, there's probably something you need. Okay? So um, check it out. Um, I've even got neural translation machines. Uh, there's 120 other videos, so I'm sure there's something you guys need if you're on here already. There's reinforcement learning for trading. You name it, I got it. AI web apps. Check out the playlist, too, to save you time of searching through videos also. I've even got a time series video. Okay, guys. So PCA, there's the model centers. Okay. And the data frame. Columns equals clusters. We named it clusters. Remember, we labeled it. Okay. PCA. Components 2. Okay. There's the centers and the reduced X, remember, with PCA 1 and 2. There's the model labels. 7 and 5. You guys can change that parameter if you want to make your visualization bigger. Okay. Uh, remember the Estonian guy? His was on, see my other video, his was on negative one and zero index. The Korean guy was zero and one. So I just found that was a funny coincidence. Also, guys, remember how I was talking about how you can upload to other companies? This is one company I did a DNA test with also. I took a, a few and then I also uploaded with a few. Um, they all change all the time and then all are have same similar results. This one, um, in all my companies, Irish is usually the highest. German is usually number two. Here, they're tied, 14.6 and 14.2. And then South Slavic usually comes uh, one of the least, uh, not one of the least, just like fourth. And then Northern Europe, I've gotten that on quite a few with Finland, too. This one is Finland and Estonia, and then Eastern Europe is usually very little. And guys, remember in machine learning, anything less than 2% is you per, it could be noise. There's a chance of that. So the South Balkan might or might not be. And the Hispanic Jews one also. Because this company also, as you can see, there's migrations. Like uh, all of them went to England from this part. And then uh, they went to Germany, Eastern Europe to Northern uh, Europe, Finland, Estonia, South Slavic, they all went to Ukraine. Anyways, guys, um, yeah, so that's probably why I thought it was funny that me and that Estonian DNA had uh, the same index. Anyways, there's my cluster. As you can see, there's the labels. We went with four, remember? Because I wanted to give the algorithm a little more leeway. They kind of hit a bullseye on each other, huh? <clears throat> and then, guys, we're going to exercise our, our pandas a little bit. Reduced X, DF, left on index equals true, right index equals true. Okay. And then uh, we're going to name that new data frame new. Okay. So as you can see, there's PCA 1 and 2. Okay. And then now we're going to merge new with clusters. Left index, right index equals true, head. Okay. And then clusters is over here. They're all labeled. Do you guys see? We assigned each one a cluster, and then this is how you save it to CSV. But remember, always do .csv. Otherwise, you'll just save it as a text file, and you don't need that. And now, guys, let's do a little pandas for a second. Median function of the data frame. As you can see, it's given us the medium and the mean. Okay? 
And guys, feel free uh, when you guys complete this project to do uh, more exercises with pandas. Pandas comes in, in handy when you got to merge data frames like predictions. Okay, guys. And remember, if you have a similar to this, uh, feel free to go with two. I just wanted to give the algorithm a little more leeway because this was debatable about which elbow. When traditionally machine learning, you're supposed to go with the first good and great elbow. This one is a bigger elbow, but it's last. So probably traditionally machine learning, I'm supposed to go with two. Anyways... This wasn't uh, too much of a serious project anyways. Anyways, guys, I was just showing you guys what you guys can do with your DNA. The very, very basics. Of course, if you wanted to go off on your own, remember, those are SNPs, remember? Uh, they don't give you the RSID number unless you're in the big club like I talked about in the last video. Otherwise, you could go off and build your own software if you had academic data sets. If you could decode RSIDs, and then it'd be your choice to give the users who submitted their DNA upload or directly with spitting in a tube their own RSID number, or you just give them a raw data genome a sequence. Although they help you in a way because, look, that's why each company knows the RSID number, and then these are... Um, you know, from there, they can decode it with their software, and then they can make predictions based on data set reference panels. Genome Link is more academic. A lot of the other companies use self-reported. My family tree DNA also uses ac academic somewhat. They've, they're starting to get more DNA from other parts of the world. So remember, just like we know in machine learning, Data, um, data sets are very um, important. So is model drift in case there's inaccurate predictions for making so many or not updating the model. Example, um, like of course, let's say it said I were 50% African or whatever, or I were 100% one of these. That's obviously not true. So that's just an example. Um, anyways, guys, um, check out my channel and be sure to hit like and subscribe. Um, remember, uh, my channel has everything and feel free to share with anyone who might need help with something. Okay, guys. And, um, if you're new to my channel, um, like I talked about earlier in the video, I got all kinds of stuff. So check it out. There's probably something you need. Anyways, guys, I hope you learned from my video. Um, if you liked it, like the video, feel free. If you want to subscribe and you haven't subscribed already, feel free to subscribe. Share too. Anyways, guys, the next video, I haven't decided what we're going to do. It's just I needed to do some more... Um, you know, uh, unsupervised learning. However, I think it's ran its course. I even got a K-means model, how to deploy a K-means model, also on this channel with SageMaker. Anyways, guys, um, I think it's ran its course, and I'm going to have to see what I'm going to do next. But I, I promise you guys, it'll be good. And then when I get to 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to do an ML pipeline on GCP. ML pipelines on GCP are not cheap. That's why I got to wait till 10,000 subscribers. Also, I'm going to get back on the cloud with Amazon SageMaker when I get to like four or 5,000 subscribers, the image classification model. It's just I've used SageMaker so much and it does run up charges. So I'm, that's why I'm taking a break from the cloud. See my database video. I also got another one of those. Anyways, guys, uh, stay tuned. I hope you like my video and uh, take care till next time. Bye.